what's going on guys welcome back to another video uh today for the eclipse uh my old wide band kind of went out so i decided to just go with a new route because the innovate kind of gave me a bunch of problems so i did some research asked some opinions and we went with the innovate x series so that's kind of all that came in the package little harness for power uh the harness here for the o2 sensor wide band sensor comes with a bung and some buck connectors too it's always told wide bands are kind of tricky so you probably shouldn't use buck connectors because you can lose voltage or cause resistance in the lines got some heat shrink and some ground pins and an o2 sensor tool uh, besides that I'm probably just gonna hook it up where my old one was it's like in the dash the x series that was pretty slim I'll show you when we get back to it so the innovates kind of a full gauge here um, but I just have it post up here in the center um, I just pull it out here and undo the plugs but you can see the depth on that this is the depth on the X series so it's way thinner uh, it does come with like a little back plate to mount so hopefully I can squeeze that in there and get this all put together so if you own a DSM and you paid for a wideband I assume you've probably taken your interior apart before but uh, if not the seat here has a couple 14s in it. The front has two nuts to it. Oh, I disconnected my battery and this is electric. Um, the rear has two bolts to it. So I'm gonna have to plug my battery back in and get the seat adjusted so I can get those out. All right, so just the DSM essentials here. Uh, never enough zip ties with these things. Top ramen and oatmeal for lunch got some mousse here throw that thing in a frying pan make up some tacos or something but anyways so slide the seat forward here we got two 14 mil bolts in the back she was sitting for a little bit surprisingly there's not much uh, rust to this car but I forgot I did pull the bottom of this out so this is going to be a little difficult to get out but besides that these uh two nuts in the front and i'm probably gonna go off camera to deal with that rear bolt but it's a little cold about to hit single digits tonight, so. Wow, it came off. Cool. Alright, I'll see you guys in a minute. Alright, so got the seat out. There it is. Uh, if you guys got power seats, there's two plugs here on the bottom. Uh, this one's for the motor. It's probably the beeper or something. I don't know. Uh, so to get the side panels off here, you're most likely gonna have a 10 mil there, either a 10 mil or a screw back here. So go ahead. I don't even need to pull this one out. I kind of got sidetracked and started doing that, I guess. But we'll make sure that one's tight. Uh, it's for the 10 mil back here. I need to go grab 10 mil. undo that this thing should all just pop off pull her on down and this is where my uh, harness for the innovate plugs into the o2 or the sensor part of the harness undo that I'm gonna have to kind of rerun the new wires and as for the gauge the way I did mine uh, it's, like I said, it sits right here. So to get this center piece off, kind of just pull on it. There you go. Just pops out. And then for the top, push the vents up. Stick your fingers in there. Pull that one out. Uh, this is a 95. I don't know what the later years necessarily look like back here. Uh, they're all probably going to have this rear wiper plug for the motor and switch. Pop that one out. Uh, and then for your alarm and hazards and stuff, here on the left side. And 
then this one had like a weird little alarm thing wired up once upon a time so you can see back in here uh, those little pigtails back there hanging down on my gauge so I'm gonna go ahead and probably unplug them from the back of the gauge and then pull them down through the dash all right so since I already had my innovate uh, wired up i'm basically going to use the same wires to wire up my am so this is going to be my gauge ground right here uh this is going to be the five volt that goes to the um ecu and then this is going to be my 12 volt reference so undo this ground pull that guy out and i'm just going to clip these i went to a bigger gauge wire uh, on both ends of where I spliced the gauge into the extension wire so I'm just going to go ahead kind of undo this and then I'll clip it kind of right before the splice it's going to be my ECU wire and then my power wire here just clip that one right before the heat shrink I got those two, then I just gotta feed all these up through the dash now. Right. See if I can manage to wiggle these up and out here. Each side of this through first. Alright, so pulling the rest of the wires out through the dash here. I gotta kinda squeeze them by each other one at a time to make them work. There's all those. Out here. Just like that. Just the innovate. And let's see if we can get the X series. If I can find it, it's just in my hand. Just to fit inside of this. Uh, since it does have the slim back, it is gonna most likely require you use this little bracket never really use them for my gauges because they all kind of fit the pods tight enough to where they don't really fall out or nothing so we'll go ahead and give this a try gauge fits in perfectly this wise but you see that's not gonna really hold so we're gonna have to make this work probably that wouldn't work to cut both sides we'll figure this out all right guys so just got back, kind of thought about it for a second, and just started cutting stuff with the grinder because I love to do that. So basically what I did is I took this regular pod, how it was, sample, put all these back in. So you can see how deep it is. This whole thing just sat in there, did its job, didn't really move, could rotate it how I wanted it. Well, since the X series is the slim, and it comes with this little bracket here. Just goes like that. Has two nuts on the back to lock it. So what I ended up doing, very roughly measured it and just took the grinding wheel to it, kind of cut out the sides. And basically, gauge that's in there, this little bracket goes in between there. I cut them a little big so it did have a, oh, dropped it real quick. Cut them a little big so it had a little bit of like teeter totter to it so it is kind of sideways on my dash right here so when i do have it it won't be crooked but yeah so that's how it's going to tighten down and uh from my point of view you won't really notice if you look through my windshield you're going to be like what the hell's going on but all that matters is what you see right perfect so let's get this thing on and uh probably see you guys when i start some wiring all right so got uh the two little harnesses kind of pulled up through the dash here ran them straight down through the same way it was before um here's those two little nuts came with to kind of hold this on so what i'm gonna do is probably pull the wires through this little pod here and i'm gonna stick them into the gauge Make sure they're the right way. Click them in. Alright. Kind of make those run better together. Get this guy go in between the wires because the studs there are in between the mounts. Alright, so I just pulled it out. Uh, put 
those little nuts there on the back of it got it all lined up I might go back and kind of shave a little bit more off the side it's not really crooked but it's a little crooked so uh, anyways let's go ahead and get this thing all wired up kind of put the center console here back together plug these plugs back in and then uh, we'll hopefully get this thing done sooner than later actually still got to run this part of the harness uh, through the firewall this is the part that plugs into the O2 sensor so we'll kind of run this through the firewall take it up to the front and then uh, we'll go get the old wideband sensor out and put the new one in well as you can see I probably have way too much stuff going through this boot right here but uh, the DSMs the firewalls don't really have too many places to put anything so go ahead and push the old O2 harness out and let's see if we can fit the new plug in so I don't have to take it back out of the gauge and rerun it through the whole dash which is looking like that's what I'm going to have to do dang it alright well Take number, I don't know, 20 something. Like I said before, you got a 2G and uh, you don't have a quick release for your front bumper, I don't know what you're doing. sensor off and put the new one in. Alright, so I already got the other plug unplugged right here. I just kind of wrapped it up here to keep it out of the way of things. that off and then this guy Let's see if I can bust this thing loose all right I just took it off like two days ago if even so I could uh, recalibrate it just thought that I was gonna fix it but nope she's dead and here's the new one uh, AM actually puts a little bit of anti seize on it for you, so that's kind of nice. Let's go ahead and get that thing started. Actually, might need to calibrate this, so okay, I'm gonna finish wiring up the sensor and hook everything up. It's calibrated, it's got to be in like atmospheric, just outside of the exhaust. Get it to read normal, and then we'll put it back in the exhaust. Alright, so those we're looking in here, uh, I already taped off the wires that I'm not going to be using. Uh, these are for like the net pot or net, basically high and low. Uh, if you have a fancy ECU, which DSM Link doesn't take those, this is going to be the logging wire. Basically, I'm going to tap this one back into this white one here. That's going to be able to tell me my... AFR is while I'm taking a data log uh, on the computer screen as well as on the gauge. This is the ground for that. Uh, I was personally told probably not the best idea to ground your wideband to your DSM link, the ECU. So I'm going to chassis ground this one. I'm going to chassis ground this one because this is going to be your negative for your gauge. And then this is going to be the 12 volt, which this uh, red wire here is already running across to the fuse box. 
so I have a fuse on it it's plugged in so that has power when a uh, keys on so I'm gonna go ahead and connect these ones together here When I do my wiring, uh, st stuff like this, I just burnt myself, stuff like this, uh, especially, uh, like I said earlier, buck connectors can kind of like uh, cause resistance and make gauges a little funky. So I just like to splice stuff, even though this wasn't splice, this is just my ground. I just like to splice it and uh, use some heat shrink. It seals great, crimp it, heat shrink it pretty good uh, sometimes I put some electrical tape over the top of the heat shrink too uh, kind of just depends but so that's how I'm gonna be doing these ones I didn't think about it when I bought it uh, I was just thinking of the wire size not really how I'm gonna be grounding it so both these little uh, eyelets here are a little small so easy way to fix that is you just take your clippers and you clip the end of them and then you can kind of spread them around the that put a good cut right in the middle then you can spread them around uh, the bolt when you go to kind of put it in there so just make it easy that way you don't have to redo some stuff but those are my two grounds I'm just gonna utilize these two bolts uh, this one I already took out so it's just right here and then that one and then I'll touch these white and red ones together here and then the gauge should be all set to go. Alright, so now I got my two ground pins and my 12 volt and my 5 volt reference for the ECU gonna go ahead and touch these up with a little bit of electrical tape uh, kind of help with moisture and stuff and just ensure a solid connection um, so let's do that real quick all right so turns out you actually don't need to uh, calibrate the AEM X series uh, sensor uh like it says kind of like the best bang for your buck on the market right now i guess it has its own calibration series inside the gauge so if it falls out of parameter over time it adjusts itself to kind of keep it within that so for here going to uh probably just run a zip tie on this side and keep my gauge my wiring kind of up out of the way of debris it's winter time there's icebergs on the street for you know us car guys um that'll probably tuck in right there just fine maybe connect it down here too and I'll give it a couple turns with this guy make sure she's tight it's a little crush washer on it of course these things suck if you leave them in for too long but Think it should be just about fine. And let's go see if this thing works before I zip tie it all up. Boom, so when it's all dashes like that, it means that it's reading leaner than the gauge can, which is a good thing at this moment. Let's see what she gets for idle. I'm gonna redo that sequence because the way I have it wired up, I just wanted to see if the heat up worked uh, key on edge and off. So we're a little fat right now, car 
is pretty cold. 78 degrees for the coolant temp. See, we're starting to lean out as, uh, as the idle kind of settles. And you can change your mode to however you want it. So this is going to be three numbers, which I think is how I'm going to want to run mine. Oh, just kidding. It's still four. Maybe, oh, you got to select it and then press done. Boom. I like that. Uh, four numbers is a little complex when you're hitting boots. You got a whole lot of things going on at once. So you got four screens yelling at you plus this. A little different. But you can do four or uh, lambda, O2. I don't know what that one is. Basically, you can read methanol, ethanol, fuel, diesel, all that good stuff. So since this is all good, go ahead and pop this sucker back in. So I'm just going to dial this thing into, get out of here real quick, some blast pipe action, a little fitment. So I'm going to go ahead and get this thing dialed in on DSM link, make sure I'm reading right. So I don't know how well I can do that right now, since it is pretty icy out. Uh, Wide open throttle doesn't really work too well. Kind of just cooks them in the icy snowness. So for now, I'm gonna trust where it's at for daily commuting. Works better than the gauge that doesn't work. And probably zip tie it up, get it all mounted good. Make sure it's out of the way, not gonna get in the way of anything. And I think that's uh, gonna be it for today. So catch you guys later. Uh, next install is going to be pretty cool. Just going to have to wait a little bit longer to get some packages in town, but going to be worth it. So, peace.